Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're doing a detailed tutorial of the module 5631 that's in this GST B300 G-Shock. Now just like in all my other tutorials, in the description you will find a table of content with time codes, so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch. However, I would advise you to watch the whole video the first time, just so you get acquainted with all the functions that this watch offers. Also, I'll be only covering the functions that are on the watch itself and I won't be covering the Bluetooth app because the app is pretty self-explanatory so if you don't want to use the app and you just want to know how to use this watch without a phone this is the tutorial for you okay so the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to check and correct the position of the hands because this is an analog digital G-Shock meaning that the hands are actually representing what the screen is showing they're not independently adjustable when it comes to the module so you want to check them in case your battery dies or you replace it although although this is a solar watch meaning that if you keep it charged so do not store it in a very dark place for long periods of time and make sure that the power reserve is at least showing here or at full it will probably never die on you however if it does die or something goes wrong with the watch and it resets the hands are probably going to get misaligned to check and correct the hands you have to be in the home screen so no matter what mode you're in pressing this lower button is going to cycle you back to the home screen and this wheel is going to show you the power reserve however if it's misaligned it's not going to show you the home screen so you're not going to know how you are in the home screen so just press and hold this for two seconds and no matter where the watch is it's going to jump back to the home screen once in the home screen press and hold this upper left button which is the adjust button but hold it until at least about five seconds so hold it press and hold still hold so ignore this first beep and as you can see it just wrote hand set and beeped and now we're setting the hands the first one is the seconds hand using these two buttons you can move it counterclockwise and clockwise once you've aligned it to 12 press this lower left button which is the mode button and the watch is going to ask you about the sub dial now these hands are actually moving out of the way so you can see what's written on the screen so ignore them for now and just set this sub dial little wheel again you can go counterclockwise and you can go clockwise and this one has pretty fine setting like so once you've aligned that to 12 press the mode button again to check the hour and minute hand they're connected so as you can see moving the minute hand is actually moving the hour hand so if they're misaligned by a large margin you're gonna have to make a few revolutions of the minute hand to get the hour hand to the correct position all the hands have to point exactly upwards so we're just gonna wait for this watch to complete its rotation and tell us what the position currently is if all the hands are pointing at 12 like this one does you're okay if not again using these two buttons you can adjust them and you can also press and hold and they're going to start moving rapidly stop it and move it backwards so like i said the hour hand is connected to the minute hand so you're going to have to make a few revolutions to get the hour hand exactly at 12. that's it so now once you're satisfied with the alignment of the hands you simply press the adjust button again and the watch is going to resume operation with all the hands jumping to their designated uh, position and that's pretty much it so this is probably the most important thing to do if you see that the hands are acting weird compared to the screen now while in the home screen now you can adjust the hours the minutes and the time zone and all of that to do it you again press and hold this adjust button but you release it after the first beep so press and hold and release the first thing that the watch is going to ask you is the time zone or your home city and this is very important to select correctly why because all the times in the world time function are based on this and calculated based on this you don't have to select your exact city although with the phone you probably will be able to what's important is to select a city that is within the time zone of your own city so you can move east you can move west until you reach the one that is in your time zone this one has already been set by the phone to Zagreb but we're gonna put it to Paris because 
that's the one we're going to use or maybe Zagreb. We'll see if it's still in memory. No, it's not. Okay, so Paris. That's the same time zone as the Zagreb that was already written in here, so we're okay. Press the mode button to select the other thing. This is the DST or the daylight saving time, summertime and wintertime. If you leave it at auto, the watch is going to connect to your phone and update the time whenever uh, there is a change. However, you can also do it manually by pressing the lower button. You can toggle it to off, to on and back to auto. Leave it as you please. Press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you about the seconds. Now you reset the seconds with the lower button. If you reset them after 30 seconds, they're going to jump to zero, but the minutes are going to move by one up. If you reset them before 30 seconds, they're going to jump to zero, but the minutes are going to stay unchanged. Another thing that you can do here is if you change a phone and this watch doesn't want to connect, or if you experience any kind of trouble with connecting to the phone, you can do an all reset on this watch in this mode so while the seconds are flashing you press and hold this for more than five seconds and it's going to complete an all reset on the watch so if you have trouble connecting this watch do this press and hold for five seconds and you're going to be fine okay so let's reset them using the lower button and if you look you're going to see that the minutes moved to 49. however if i reset them now so before 30 seconds the minutes stay unchanged that's it. Press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you about the hours. Here you can go backwards, you can go forwards. So let's put it to, let's say, 18. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks you with the minute, about the minutes. So again, you can move it wherever you want. We're going to put it to 41 or 40 because that way the hands are going to be away and not obscuring the screen. Press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you for the year because this is a perpetual calendar watch. Again, you can go up, you can go down with these two buttons. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks you for the month. So you can go up, you can go down and pressing it again asks you about the date. The day of the week is calculated automatically so you don't have to set it up. Okay, press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you if you want a 24 hour or a 12 hour format. If you select a 12 hour format, you're going to have an AM PM indicator. If you select a 24 hour one, you're going to have the military time, which is the one we use here. So I'm going to leave it. Press the mode button again and the watch asks you about the date format. So if you're from the US, you're going to select month and date. If you're from Europe, you're probably going to select date month. And again, you toggle it with this lower right button. Press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you about the language of the day. So you can toggle between English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Russian, and back to English. We're going to leave it at English. Press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you whether you want it to make uh, a sound when you operate the buttons, so it's key tone, or if you want to mute, mute it. So again, pressing the slower right button is going to mute the watch. So now when we operate the buttons, the watch is not going to make any noise. Let's put it back to key tone. Press the mode button again. This is the backlight, the automatic backlight. So if you put it to on, if you put your watch level and you tilt it to your face, it's going to light up the screen, but only in the dark because this is a solar watch, meaning that it knows when it's in the dark and when it's not. So if it's in the broad daylight or in the light like this, it's not going to activate, saving the battery. This also means that this watch is going to keep it on constantly, while the regular battery operated G-Shocks turn off this function after six hours. You can also toggle it to off to stop the watch you know lighting up when you tilt it which is something I find quite annoying when I drive so I usually put it to off press the mode button again this is the light duration if you leave it at three it's gonna be lit on for three seconds after you press the button or once you tilt the watch if you toggle it to one it's gonna be on for one and a half seconds let's leave it at three Press the mode button again and the watch asks you whether you want it to emit a Bluetooth signal and trying to catch the signal from the phone or if, you, if you're in an, like an airplane or somewhere where you cannot use it, you can toggle it to off and the watch is going to shut down all radio communication. That's pretty much it. Press the mode button again, the watch asks you about the power save mod. So if you turn the power save on, once in the dark, in the middle of the night, the watch is going to turn off the screen and sometimes even stop the hands. Once it sees the, the light, the second hand usually stops, it's going to jump back to where it's supposed to be. You can toggle it on or off. 
and press the mode button again and the watch returns back to the home city selection. So if you missed any of the of the settings or you want to change something simply use this button to get to it and to change it you don't have to it's not going to exit the adjusting screen and finish uh, finish the setting until you're satisfied and you press the adjust button once you press the adjust button the watch is gonna jump back to regular timekeeping and the hands are gonna jump to their correct position that's pretty much it when it comes to setting up the watch now while in the home screen pressing the adjust button will change what this uh, screen displays. Now it's going to display the hours, the minutes and the seconds. If you press it again, it's going to display the calendar data. So the date, the month and day of the week. So you change it with this. You can also use this to quickly check the position of the hands because once you are in the home screen and you have the digital time displayed here, this time has to correspond to the position of the hands. If it doesn't, it means your hands are misaligned. That's pretty much it. Pressing this button doesn't do anything. Pressing this button will show you what current home city you're, <laughs> you're connected to. So not connected to, but what home city you selected. So Paris, so you can check whether your home city is the correct one. And what I did just here is if you press it and hold it for two seconds, it's gonna try to find your phone. And once it connects to the phone, the phone is gonna ring to the highest setting uh, regardless of it being turned off when it comes to the when it comes to tones that's pretty much it so stop it and pressing this will initiate a connection to the phone like so so if you want to manually correct the time you simply press this the watch is going to connect to the phone and download the time data let's stop it like this because this one is not paired to my phone so press it to stop it if you press the light button it's going to activate the light that's pretty much it when it comes to the home screen. Let's move on. The first function we're going to cover is the world time. Now in the world time function, I believe you have like 30 something cities in the memory of the, of the, of the watch. However, if you use the app, you can select up, you can choose from up to 300 cities in the app and then download the 30 or something that you want to use on your phone. And they're going to cover all the time zones in this world. So once here, the hands are always going to show the home, the home time and this here is going to show you the world time. You can move or scroll through the world time by using the lower and upper button. Like this, you're going due east. Like this, you're going due west. So let's say you want to travel somewhere and you go there. And now you don't want to observe the, because you landed in Chicago and let's say there it's 1146. You don't want to check the time on this small screen. And also you want to use the alarms on the watch. What you want to do is switch between the home city and the world time city. And to do so, you press the light button and this button simultaneously. So press like this. And now what was our home city becomes our world time. So now Paris is displayed on the digital display, while Chicago is going to be displayed with the analog display, making it our new home city. And that's pretty cool for people that travel a lot. Once you get back home to Paris or wherever you are, and you want to jump back, again, you press these two buttons, and the watch is going to jump again, switching Chicago to the digital screen, and putting the analog back to what your home city is. So a pretty useful function. Another thing you can do in the world time function is turn the DST setting for each time zone individually. Again, it can be automatic through the phone or you can do it manually. To change the setting, all you have to do is once you selected the time zone you want, so in this case, Chicago, you press and hold the adjust button, it's gonna beep set and now it's currently set to automatic meaning that it's going to pick up the data from your phone to tell you whether the dst is currently observed in chicago you can also override it by pressing this lower button so you can put it to off to on or back to auto we're going to leave it to auto and that's pretty much it pressing the adjust button exits the setting screen of this world time function if you want to over this world time zone if you want to select another zone again you select that time zone and you press and hold to set the DST. The only place where you cannot set the DST is the UTC because it doesn't observe the DST. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the world time function. Moving on. 
The next function is the stopwatch. This comes with a 1 1,000th of a second stopwatch that can measure up to 24 hours. The 1 1,000th precision is available for the first 60 minutes. After that, I believe you can observe 1 10th or something like that. So to start the stopwatch, you press the lower button. Once the stopwatch is running, you can stop it by again pressing this button and you can reset it by pressing the upper button. You can also do the split time. So you start the stopwatch with the lower button and you want to write down the time of someone passing, you simply press the upper button, it's gonna stop the stopwatch and show you the time, but the stopwatch keeps running in the background. Pressing this button again unfreezes the screen and you can see where the stopwatch reached. You can also do the first and second place. So if you have two runners, once the first one goes through the finish line, you press the upper button. Once the second one goes through, you press the lower button. And now you can write down the time of the first runner, Pressing this upper button is going to show you the time of the second runner and pressing it again resets the stopwatch. So pretty simple. Moving on. The next function is the countdown timer. This has a 24 hour countdown timer settable down to the second. Now it's currently set to 10 minutes. Again, just like with the stopwatch, pressing the lower right button is gonna start it. Once it reaches zero, it's gonna beep. You can also stop it and reset it to the time set in memory. As I said, you can adjust it to any time between one second and 24 hours. To set the countdown timer, it cannot be running, so it has to be stopped and then you press and hold the upper right, uh, upper left button until you enter the setting screen. Once in the setting screen, the watch is going to ask you for the hours and now you can again go up, you can go down, like so, pressing the mode button asks you for the minutes, again you can go down, you can go up and pressing it again, it's going to ask you for the seconds. So in this case, we set this timer for 23 hours, 10 minutes and 56 seconds. To exit the adjusting screen, you press the adjust button and once we start the countdown timer, it's gonna start from this time. Again, also when you stop it and reset it, it's gonna jump back to that time that we set in memory. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the countdown timer. Move on. The next function is the alarm. This watch comes with five alarms, I believe five alarms, and you go with them, I mean you toggle between them with the lower button. And each one can have a certain name that you can set in the app. However, if you don't want to use the app, you simply select the one that you want to set. And this is the hourly chime and pressing this or not pressing this is going to turn it off or on. So now the hourly chime or the signal or the beep that the watch does every full hour is turned off. To turn it on, you simply press this again. Pressing this, we can do the same for this alarm. So this is a morning alarm and it's set for 7 a.m. You can toggle it on or off with this button. Even if one of the alarms is turned off, you can turn it on automatically once you start setting it. To set the alarm to the desired time, you press and hold the adjust button, you enter the setting screen, and as you can see, the hands automatically move out of the way so you can see the screen. And again, the hours, you can go up, you can go down. Pressing the mode button asks about the minutes, and again, you can do go up, you can go down. So now we set this alarm at 7.55. Pressing the mode button again, the watch is gonna ask you whether you want this to be a daily alarm. So to go off every day at 7.55, or if you toggle it with this button, it can also be a one-time alarm, meaning it's gonna go off tomorrow at 7.55 and not gonna repeat itself ever again or it can be a scheduled alarm. If you select a scheduled alarm, you can set the date and the year and the month on when you want this alarm to go off, which is pretty cool. You press the adjust button and now the watch is gonna ask you for the year and now you can set it to any year you want. If you leave it like this, it's gonna go off at 7.55 every day in the year 2094. Pressing the mode button again is gonna ask you about the month. So, if you select it like this, it's gonna go off every day in, for during January of 2094. If you also select the date, it's gonna go off at 7.55 on January the 30th of 2094. So you get the picture. If, however, we go back to the year and we select the year as hyphens, so no number at all, let me just do it. Now this is gonna be a yearly alarm that's gonna go off 
every year on Jan on January 30th. So you get a bit of a birthday alarm if you want like that. Let's go again. If you also do this to the month, now it's going to go off at 7.55 on the 30th of every month, which is pretty cool. And you can also do with the with the date. So if you go here and let's say put this to hyphens, but select a month, like I said, like this, it's going to go off every day on January of every year at 7.55. I know this sounds complicated, but you probably got what I'm trying to say. That's it. Once you set the, the alarm, you can simply exit the adjusting screen using this button and that's it. So you set this alarm to 7.55. Like that, you can also set up any other alarm in this watch. So this one is at 11. If you want to change it or toggle it off, you press this button. If you want to toggle it on, press this. If you want to set it again, press and hold the adjust button. Once in the, in the, in the setting screen, using this, jump to what you want it and you change it with these two buttons. So the same as setting up the timer and setting up the main time. And that's pretty much it. So press the adjust button to exit and press the mode button to jump back to the home screen. Another thing that this watch can do is manually move away the hand. So if, let's say you want to use the stopwatch and it just turns out to be that this hand is in the way, it's not going to automatically move it away because it only does it when you're setting something. But if you want to use the stopwatch and this is in the way, you press the light button and this lower button. It's going to activate the hand shift function and the hands are going to move away while you use the stopwatch. So now you can use the stopwatch freely without the hands getting in the way. Once you want to return them to show you the time, you can either do this or you can simply jump to the next function and the watch is going to stop or uh, uh, abort the hand shift function. And that's pretty much it. So this explains all the functions of this module and this beautiful GST B300. I hope you found it uh, useful. I know it's a long video, but it is called the detailed tutorial. Like I said, all of these are much simpler in the app, but I like to do it the old fashioned way by learning the functions of the watch and digging through these modules. That's it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.